Welcome to On The Fence, the show that's about helping you decide whether or not to spend your hard-earned money on the biggest and possibly best releases. Nick. Hans. Are you ready to get gangst? <laughs> well, I am. Sure. I am exceedingly white. <laughs> Nick, we are looking at Saints Row, the reboot to Volition's key series, like f- top franchise. Kind of their only series. I can't remember what else they've really done. I feel like they have developed some other stuff, but they're definitely best known for Saints Row. Yes. Uh, the action sandbox game, best way to describe it's an it. Open world GTA alike. It's a yeah, it is. This is definitely back to the roots of their GTA clone. So Nick, what do you know about Saints Row? It is a full reboot of the series. Yep. You don't have to rub the salt in the wind. Like I'm already pissed off enough about that. I mean. And that's spoilers, they couldn't have gone anywhere with Saints Row 5, considering how Saints Row 4 ended, without it literally almost being a completely different game. So, we'll get into it once we kind of talk about the story, and maybe a bit in the wrap-up, but... Yeah, like, the, the reboot has rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way, and I think that's kind of why this game has gotten such a bad rap a little bit. I feel like there's a bit of saltiness there with some of the fans. Um, in, ter- in terms of the fan reaction, yes, but I also feel like... Yeah, it is not the only reason why it's like, gotten... When you, when you take an objective view of it, the way Saints Row 4 ended would not be conducive to making a sequel. Yeah. No, I get it, like, but like, I feel like... Okay, we'll get into it. We'll talk about it during the story. Let's look at some Here, gameplay. Play, you might as well fucking make Populous with the way fucking Saints Row 4 ended. Um, so, welcome... I'm trying to think where it's going to load me. Well, I think it's going to load me at the... Welcome... To our hideout, Nick. Okay. This is, is this is it. This is the Sandra hideout. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I suppose the best way to kind of look at it is so yeah, Sandro, uh, GTA clone with a l- little bit more of a lean onto the comedy factor of things, the over the topness of things, the anarchy of things, um. Case in point, if I jump into this car now, I'll go through the windshield instead of, you know... You could do that in the original. Yeah, you could, know that's what I said, but like, compared to GTA, you know. Um, yeah, like, that's kind of one of the key things, and uh, you'll definitely notice that in some of the story missions I play in this. Humor is a big part of this. Um, I'm trying to find something to show off a combat... Do this one. Um, hey, Nick, look, by the way. Like, I have a, I have a marker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, oh, it came yeah. back. Um, so this is also the new setting for the Saints franchise. Uh, I can't remember what this place is called. Um, but pretty much quite different from uh, what was in the original Saints Row 3 and kind of, well, 4 was just a remake. Or well, you, you, like 1 and 2, I can't remember what the area was called in 1 and 2, but it was also still very much a big New York-esque yeah, like city. Yeah, a, a New York alike. And then, yes, when they went to Stillwater for 3 and 4. Still it very much a New York Still very much, yes, a... Stillwater, I think, was a much more a direct rip-off of New York. Like, mm-hmm. I think it literally had, like, a giant statue and stuff. Yeah, whereas you can see with this, a lot more kind of, like, south, you know, maybe towards the Texas, Mexico yeah. area. And you, you get that as well, and kind of the soundtrack, and with some of the characters you meet, and just the overall aesthetic there is also a bit of a a reno area almost um but we'll uh, we'll talk about that in a wee second what i'm going to do is i'm going to blow this guys up so these are the panteros Mm -hmm. one of your rival gangs in the game um oh god um they are joined with the idols uh, and then also the Marshals. So Panteros are kind of like Latin American, mostly to do with vehicles and stuff yeah. like that. 
Uh, the idols are more kind of ravers, I suppose is the best way to describe them. Whoop. Uh, more kind of ravers, and then the marshals are a private military group. Uh, the cool thing about all of these is that the four core members of the Saints gang mm. all have ties to these other gangs. All the gr other groups. At the very start of the game, your main character, the boss, is actually working for the marshals part time oh, right. as a part of their private military group, uh, which is quite cool. And it's in the story. It does add a little bit, the fact that you'll have these ties to the mm. new group. Um, and then each of the character arcs for each of the characters as well, uh, in terms of story missions, also then ties into, you know, um, each of their the, the groups that they're associated with. So let's take a look at the map then while I'm here, okay? Um, it's not the biggest. No. Um, but... I suppose one of the biggest uh, issues uh, people have had about the the map is, or sorry, about the open world, is that they feel it's very dated. Mm. Now, we've already touched on the aesthetic. I think aesthetically it's way, way more interesting than the previous intro games 3 and 4. Yeah. Like, uh, if we commonly, someone said some of these fast travel things, for example, uh, so you use landmarks as fast travel. So, like, this one. This is a rocket in the shape of a panther neck. That's <laughs> fucking metal as fuck. Um, I think this is the Reno. Yeah, El, El Dorado is kind of the Reno Vegas mm. area. And like it's just filled to the brim with like these big, large drug packages. And also <laughs> like all these big glowing billboards and stuff. Um, I think for me personally, the biggest issue I have with this open world is actually on the technical aspect of it. Uh, wait, where am I? Here? here yeah uh the technical aspect of it and that's what makes it feel dated um the streets feel very empty the there's not a lot of places any kind of indoor areas that you go to are just the shops mm. uh there's not a lot of when i think of like the likes of yakuza for example uh yakuza what was the, uh, like a dragon Ko Kwame too actually okay. like you could go into nearly every building that you see yeah you know and i feel like that to me is one of the biggest things about this open world like if you look at the street now right normally if this was like um even gta 5 you know like these streets are like there's three four five mm. people there's not a lot happening you know usually you'd have like swan like sign swingers there'd be like you know stuff on the buildings like I compare these to the likes of like Kiwami 2 and stuff like that, and it just yeah, it, it, it feels lifeless. Yeah, it feels very lifeless, and I think a lot of people have said like, yes, it feels like an open world that was ripped straight out of a 360 game in terms mm -hmm. of like there's nothing in the areas the devs don't want you to go. Yeah. So like, look at the likes of say Breath of the Wild, where there is something to find in every single nook and cranny of that open world, yeah. and you're constantly being rewarded for your exploration. Whereas in this, it feels like if there isn't a map marker there, there's no point in going there. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I feel like, as well... And, like, even... But now, again, like I said, aesthetically, I do love the game. Like, and that even on that just that street we were looking at, you know, it's... You know, with the flags hanging down, with the orange glow of it, it's a very colourful game, and the city is very pretty. Mm. Graphically, it's fine. You know, the Saints games were never done, you know... Break, you know, yeah. Amazing. They, they were never going for like hyper realism by any stretch. There was always like a a slightly cartoonish element to yeah. it, with the way, especially you saw like in three and four, like Oleg being this like comically large guy and things, and like the stuff like Professor Genki and like that bright, colorful, zany aspect to the Saints Row games. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I feel like this guy, like for as much as. This game has made the world feel aesthetically pleasing. I feel like the zaniness has been dialed down a touch. I know, obviously, there's a big thing to say considering the last game had fucking superpowers. Mm. Um, but yeah, I do feel like it's. Uh, where the fuck is this police fan to destroy? This is the first time I've ever had to do a police fan. Uh, one. Um, is, does that look sus to you? Yes. Grand. The fact also there is an icon above it. Yeah, it, it, it only just popped in there now. Got it. Um, 
So, so yeah. in terms, yes, obviously this is in quote unquote, or not even quote unquote, actually a reboot of the series. Mm -hmm. So like, what has carried over from like three and four? So obviously, like that's kind of where you and I came on to the Saints Row franchise. We never got into it in one and two, and it was still maybe a bit more grounded. Yeah. Um, so obviously, like stuff that Saints Row like is known for, stuff like the insurance fraud mini game, like the zany stuff like Professor Genki and all that. Like the stuff like being able to use a giant dildo as a weapon and things like that. How much of that has carried over into this reboot, and how much of it is just they wanted to use the Saints Row name because it is so recognized branding? I suppose, like in terms of the, uh, let's see if I can bring up this. So yeah, in terms of like what they've carried across, so the business management side of it is still mm. there. So each one of these. Fleurs, is that what they're called? Yeah. Is a different uh, business we have gotten into, and in those businesses, there is an associated side game. So, Shady Oaks is the insurance company, mm -hmm. which uh, leads into this, the uh, insurance yeah. fraud mini game or side quest. And then that obviously, all these businesses then passively accumulate income, which you can then transfer into your bank account. Uh, Another one then is so Jim Rob's uh, garage. Uh, so again, that is just to steal cars and bring them to him, chop shop, and mm. then you, again, as you do these side quests, then the passive income for each of these increases yeah. over time. So that would be a big thing. In terms of like you know, Doctor Zank Gank, Doctor Genki, Doctor Genki, you know, I haven't seen a lot of that. Mm. Um, but there are, for in some ways, it does feel like they're just retreading some of the same ground. Like so, for example, uh, Los Panteros are, they feel almost identical to a, a gang in Saints Row Three. Mm. You know, and like the uh, idols, which are like crazy raver guys, they feel like just like the hacker hackers yeah. in Saints Row Three. So some of it does feel a little bit retreaded. Um, and that's kind of disappointing. Like if you're going to reboot it go balls out with it and be completely different. Yeah, like, yeah, like, use the chance to actually kind of make it more unique. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and it, it actually works as a structure kind of similarly. So, each kind of area, he says, has your job, has your business, and then as you kind of do the side quest, and it helps raise it. So, these threats are all different gangs and the police, so we're getting rid of those so that these can operate more freely and then therefore get more money into our passive income. Um... I'll fast travel. I don't know. Can I fast travel back here? Probably not because I've got the police on me. But, um. Yeah, so, like, that that's a big thing, obviously, is like the, the scenes don't want to just be another gang. They mm -hmm. want to be a, a business venture or something, yeah. you know? And that does play in heavily with it. Um, in terms of the comedy, it's very much carried across. Again, not quite as. I don't think it's as good as um, the previous games. And I also feel like. <laughs> The characters of the the scenes themselves are one not as memorable as like the original gang, you know, like yeah. freaking Gats. Johnny Gats had his own character, his own game and stuff, you know. Um, and they are. I don't know, right? If it's me that I've gotten older, mm -hmm. but they're kind of insufferable. <laughs> So I don't know if I'll get a chance to show this in this one, but like, so actually one thing, well, before I go on to that, one thing I have, Cardi, is like the ga the gameplay, you can see the combat, mm. exact fucking same. Yeah. Like it is the exact same. Um, even from like the over the top takedowns, which I think are still really funny. You know, like that's just a straight up an insiguri. My personal favorite is a, a trio of headbutts. <laughs> um, so uh, there may be one difference is you have active abilities so you can see down here throwing grenades I have this buff then that I can also do that makes me get a shield and mm. such um ow ow wait he's doing my move against me oh no it's not okay um yeah I feel like the combat is just straight up copy and pasted out of the previous uh Saints Row games uh less superpowers obviously yeah. but uh, also, the hand rocket, as I like to call it, is still OP, which is like uh, my preferred method of killing, because <laughs> it just makes fools fly. Uh, you also then, I don't think this was in a similar game, but your takedown here, um, that actually gives you health back. Um, so, it, 
and you refill your takedown by killing people. Okay. Uh, so it does encourage you to be a bit more aggressive in your gameplay, mm. which I think is a good touch. Uh, I think pr in the previous games, people just dropped health. Um, they don't drop health now, they just drop ammo and cash. So, yeah, I think it's a really smart way to encourage you to go on the attack. Is there a cover? Like, is, like, do I remember there being a cover system? There wasn't like cover in... Uh, was there not? I no, there, was. there wasn't. The only thing I can do is crouch. I thought you could go into cover in three and four. A crouch is down on the D-pad. Awesome. That's weird to me. Yeah, it's very weird. Um, let's go into an actual mission, okay? Okay. Uh, because I do want to show you some of the comedy aspects. Because it is... The comedy is still kind of there, and I said it's still very charming. Um... While we wait for the load, I'll kind of talk about the story. Not the load fast with my uh, <laughs> Z drive, M M2 drive, M M oh, I'm so techy. Oh, yep. Sigma male tech. Oh. Definitely didn't really struggle to get this TV set up to your PC hands. Yeah, got fucked. <laughs> um, so, it looks like we haven't actually went anywhere, but we have. We've gone back in time. Um, so, missions. Uh, I want to do this one, this moot. So, I'll show you as well the rest of the gang. So, Eli, who I'm talking to now, uh, there's, sorry, there's four core members of the uh, Saints gang. So, yourself, the boss, Nina, who is a part of Los Panteros, is kind of like the car person. Eli is like the business guy. Um, he wasn't really affiliated with a gang, but his storyline seems to be leading towards the marshals. Um, and then, Jake... Jack. I don't know. The last guy, he's so fucking interchangeable. Um, he is then a part, was a part of the idols. He's kind of like the socialite of the group. Mm. And saying that, that's where I kind of have an issue with the characters in this. So, as I said, I find them kind of insufferable. And I don't know... It's done in such a straight-laced way, it isn't tongue-in-cheek yeah it's not a commentary so for example uh in a previous mission i had to uh, save jack or jake or whatever his name is because the, the idols kidnapped him for obviously abandoning the idols and that was all well and good um and then he talked about like <laughs> how he wanted to go put his like tags on social media and they went to a two minute conversation about how many followers he had on social media and, like, it's stuff like that and I'm like that is such a fucking Gen Z conversation mm. to have for two minutes and I just kind of hated it well, and like, again it was done in such a way it didn't seem tongue in cheek the way this was presented in the build up like kind of the release and the way it was first Mm -hmm. It drew a lot of comparisons to... Ow. Ow. You're not good at driving. Huh? I, I really wasn't paying attention. Yeah, so, like, the way it was presented and the way it was shown in the build-up and the first reveal and all, a lot of people drew comparisons to Watch Dogs 2. Yeah. And the way, kind of, your hacker group in that was, for lack of a better term, a bunch of millennials. Mm -hmm. And, like... Do you think that is an apt comparison? I never played Watch Dogs 2. I couldn't comment on whether they were well portrayed or not, but do you think that is the right sort of... Like, that's the sort of tone they are going for? So, with Watch Dogs 2, um, I suppose I feel slightly more... In, like, when they start talking about social media and stuff, I feel less cringy about it because Watch Dogs is obviously all set around technology mm. and social media and your, you know, your online fingerprint. So I feel less cringy about that, and I don't remember, I could be wrong, I don't remember them ever be having something as on the nose as, bro, my Insta has like 5 million followers, and I get like 30,000 likes a post, which is what this guy is very much, mm. this guy Jake, or I can I check what his name is now? No? No. Um, is very much like that. Um, don't be wrong, yeah, I feel like... Uh, tech or whatever his name is the guy with the, the LED helmet he was probably the most on the nose and a bit mm. cringy in that game but definitely I don't remember it being as bad as this and saying that like the rest of them are okay like in this mm. game like Nina is fine um, 
you know, she is the engineer, tough Hispanic woman of the group. You know, Eli, who we're going to now. I, it, okay, I feel like... I feel like that was okay. Oh no, that's totaled. <laughs> I feel uh, like that uh, was really, really. Bye, car. Oh, get fucked. <laughs> um. So, and the boss is obviously kind of a bit generic. It is literally sixty meters. Away. I have to. I have to drive elsewhere after this. There we go. Well, actually, I think his car is there. It's gone. Um, Eli. I like so like for example Eli for contrast right so he is the business uh, business guy he is hey, Eli. I know he's oh, not dressed like it right now but he is the business guy <laughs> okay um, so this 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 is this is a story mission we're doing is a LARP story mission which is why he's dressed as such so Eli's the business guy he doesn't really like to shoot the guns he doesn't really like um he doesn't like the violent side of it. He wants to run the Saints as a business. Where mm. Although they do illegal stuff, he wants to run them as a business. Um, so he is... So if you actually listen now, you can hear... Like, this is his car. It's been done up for his LARPing. Yeah. But he is so... So much of a nerd, it's almost a stereotype. Like, he listens to classical music. At the start of the game, you rob a bank. And it, instead of listening to, like, you know, music to pump himself up, he listens to motivational tapes. <laughs> you know, it's stuff like that. And although that's on the nose, it's done in such a humorous way, he is the, the butt of the joke. Yeah. And that's fine. You know, we need that comic relief. But the guy, Jake, it wasn't... It didn't feel like comic relief. It felt like this is a legit part of his personality, and that's just what the kids are like nowadays. I mean... I know it is, but you don't put it in my fucking video games. But never fear. I know the best place to procure weapons and This is a really dumb mission, by the way, but I think it, it shows off... It shows off the comedy side of the game quite well, and it is worth a laugh or two. So this is kind of the Reno area as well, so you can see it's all kind of done up with big amusements and such like that. that was so the story overall is... Grand. Mm. It starts with a flash forward, actually of the Saints, they've already made it big, they're having a big party, and someone, um, shoots, uh, or shoots the boss and leaves him in a shallow grave, and then it flashes back to where we are now yeah. in the game. Um, so the story is grand, uh, the characters and villains you meet, so Marshall, <laughs> it's my LARP costume then. Yep. I've got a- It is indeed a costume. <laughs> it's a LARP costume. I like to pass it on to you. Oh, and I have a LARP gun. Try it out. Shoot someone. Um, okay. Oh, no. I'm so good, I surprised Today. myself. See? The whole city plays the <laughs> dust move. They die a worthy death. <laughs> Let's LARP yeah, this. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, the fact they had to make an mm. entire new set of animations for LARP death is really quite funny. Yeah, so like the characters you meet are, are all pretty interesting. Like Marshall, who is the owner of the, the private military group, the Marshalls. Um, he named the military group after himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's pretty good. It's like his first name was like Invictus Marshall or something. It's really funny. Um, but yeah, like and all the story missions are a lot of fun. The gameplay overall is just a throwback to Saints Row 3. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do... I do really enjoy that. I do. Like, the Saints Row 3 is actually my personal favourite of the Saints Row games. I think one thing it does well is... Every single mission will st has pretty much, like, it's a very basic thing of, like, you know... Oh, this this gang stole our car parts. You need to go and sort mm. it out. And then, you know, that's very basic. But then they'll throw in one curveball in there. That makes it a scene throw. So, for example, in that one, oh, this guy stole our, this gang stole our car parts. You need to go fix this. So you go there and he's like, you know what, fuck it. Uh, don't, don't worry about bringing them back. Just hop in this monster truck and destroy them all. You know, it's stuff like that yeah. um, that makes it scene throws esque and they do that pretty well. This one's a bit different because it's just stupid from the get-go, mm. but... 
<laughs> this cardboard neck coming out of this fucking micro is hilarious. Do mine eyes deceive me? What brings Elijah the Wise to the land of Tapeworm? Seek ye to join with the Great Worm? Nay, I am here on behalf of House Duststorm. Lies. We know thou art houseless. Duststorm shall welcome us with open arms once we torch <laughs> thy beacon. Yeah, on guard, shitlord. <laughs> Let's get smiting! This isn't hide and seek. <laughs> it's so dumb, but it's so funny. It's <laughs> such a like, reaction. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's really funny, and it actually took effort to do that. Mm. You know, like now. And also, like, did you just hear someone just go pew yeah. pew? Like, that's so good. And like, so whenever whenever it leans into that sort of thing, it's I really enjoy the game. Um. But yeah, goddamn, dude! I swear. The first time, there's actually one of the one of them is actually a uh, one of the takedowns during LARP is uh, you r fake rip out someone's heart and then, <laughs> and then just hold there, just like go like do 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 with your hand. I'll see if I can do it. I, yeah, there I, it is. I, <laughs> I don't think fucking plowing your car into the area yeah, is exactly yeah. LARPing. Yeah, somehow, uh, <laughs> vehicular manslaughter is pretty hard to fake. It's kinda, kinda bad, you know, like, how come I get to just kill people, but you know, when they do, oh, it's fine. Bro, come on, wait. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, like, these are really like it's such a nice touch, and it's so dumb, and I kind of just love it in every single regard. Do that, or we could start our own house. Oh fuck yeah! Is that one or two seater? Two seater. Fuck yeah! Let's get in this. So like, there's one thing we probably need to talk about, mm -hmm. which is. My initial saltiness to this game being yes. rebooted, right? Uh, you were hesitant to let me do the on the fence for this because yes, thought, because I believe your exact words were, "I can't wait to do the on the fence and shit all over this game." I, I feel like you could admit I have been more than fair. Yeah. So I'll let let's discuss why where my saltiness came from, right? Because it's not Saints Row Five. That's not just the reason, right? Okay. So the. Don't know what's going on there. Moving on. Uh, imagine if you're like pulled over by the police and this car just <laughs> drove past. You're like, really? Um, so, as you said, Saints Row 4 ended with like, where the fuck could they really go? Yeah, right? they, were, they were essentially gods that could rewrite history. Yeah. To me, as someone who got really infested in those characters, um, I feel like an ending was deserved. Like a, an actual ending. And with how far, like, if their plan was to always reboot the series, I feel like because it had gone so off the rails, you still could have had you could have could have had your cake and eaten it too. Okay. I feel like with the way that Saints Row Four ended, you could have done a post DLC, a mini game, whatever, where it ends with a tearful farewell, all the Saints are together, and somehow they activate some sort of big Holy bang shit, machine nice hmm. and reboots that way. And I feel like that is the big issue, with, which a lot of people do have, is like, don't get me wrong, I completely understand, I agree, you can't go any further than what the way Saints Row 4 did, which yes. is to start hopping through time, but you could have ended it, you know, and I, I give those characters a send off, because like, Saints Row 3 really overperformed, mm. you know, and like, it kind of, Saints Row 4 then carried that on. I, I, I think that is a good send-off, though. Like, they got what they wanted, they established this empire, and they were finally masters of whatever they wanted. And they brought back their friends, like, Johnny came back, Johnny comes back. Like, I think, to me, that was an ending. Mm. But, like, I feel like, if you're gonna do a reboot, why not just have them, like, I feel like a big send-off, they find some sort of machine that, they're like, oh, look, we can bring Earth back. But we have to reboot everything, you know, because that was their whole thing. Mm. And four was trying to bring Earth back. Yeah. 
So, like, that's the maze. Why couldn't it go that way? Like, okay, you know, and it's the big emotional sacrifice, but also... <laughs> Sorry. I, the last time I actually did, did wait for him, and I just want to see what happened that time, I didn't. Um, I don't know, so, so like that to me is where my initial saltiness came from. Um, after playing the game, I so would still not say I'm completely sold on it. Um, just for a couple of reasons that I've I'll kind of already stated, and some that we maybe haven't talk, talked about just yet. Um... Come on. Um, see, like, I don't, like, as much as, yes, I would have liked to see them try and justify a scene through five with how four ended, I, I felt very content with how those character arcs wrapped up and where they ended up. Like, to try and make a another game out of that and to continue that story I felt just would have been... But, like, to me, like, I wouldn't have needed another full game. Like I said, like I said, a... a uh, but they did that with Got Out of Hell. Yeah, but Got Out of Hell was Johnny coming back. It wasn't actually to do with, like, what I would have wanted. Sorry, I still love that kill animation. Um, do you know, like... And that's the bit I kind of want, is just... Um, so we have kind of talked about the te technical aspects a bit. Mm -hmm. Um... We'd like to talk about what some of the reviews and stuff have been that while I kind of kill some fools. Um, yeah, so the reviews for this have been fairly mixed, I think. Um, a lot of the complaints mainly are focused around, as we mentioned, like kind of the open world stuff, and also that on a technical level, the game just isn't very polished in the way it's released. Yeah. Which I think is very shocking, considering, like, wasn't this originally meant to come out? Like a good few months, like in May or something. Mm, got delayed a couple of times. Yeah, so, like people say, like there has been people saying that yes, they've had numerous soft locks and had to reboot the game. Some reviewers have said they've completely been unable to continue in the game because of different bugs that they've had. So, <laughs> there is just a, there does just seem to be yes, a lack of polish. That so, yes, I'm sure well, with a hey, Eli, what's this with a good stuff? couple of patches <laughs> they'll. Check thine coin first. <laughs> so, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, so, like, with a few patches, yes, the performance will likely get there, but it's a shame that's had to launch it in this state and kind of sully the first kind of word of mouth coming out about it. Mimic? Hmm. Don't fucking touch this! <laughs> that's not Okay, calm down. I won't touch it. Ah, uh, got that one. Yeah, so, um... In terms of my experience then, kind of with were I've seen uh, with the the technical aspect is um, I haven't had any game breakers. So I kind of always, my personal scale of uh, bugs are like, it's like a zero to three scale. So one, zero is nothing. Mm. Like, come on. Uh, zero is nothing. Uh, one is kind of t like visual and tech, like jank. So like, you know, People clipping through the earth, uh, you know, just really, you know, clothes maybe not so great, stuff like that. Like that's, uh, two is kind of like progress inhibitors, so although it's not a game breaker, it is like... Like I have had to restart to a checkpoint. Restart to a checkpoint, I've had to maybe restart the game as well. Um... I can't tell if that's disgusting. Uh, and then three is just, I've actually had to go back and completely restart. That's not fun. Mm. Uh, so I have encountered ones and twos in this. What the fuck were they? Ooh. Oh, shoot me through that. Um, yeah, I've encountered ones and twos in this. Um, There's always those guys at LARP that always cheat, so it makes sense. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, I think I was when I was talking to you guys about it, um, I had a point where I got caught up in an explosion and thought, oh, cool. Um, but there's battle damage on the mm. clothes. That's really cool. And it turned out, no, the game had just randomly re-equipped my vest and underwear, and it was clipping through my jeans and shirt. <laughs> um, so, you know, again, not doesn't affect the gameplay yeah. at all, but, you know, a bit weird. Um, and, like, there's minor stuff, like, the fire hydrants in this game apparently send your car, like... 
dozens of meters into the sky yeah. <laughs> because they are so powerful and like stuff like that is dumb janky fun and i don't think anyone's ever going to be like oh this game is terrible because of it it is when it comes to yes people are having their game soft lock and having to restart yeah lose progress because they're having to restart the game yeah so i've had uh several occurrences of that so one of which is during a um you're heisting a cargo uh, convoy and i hopped one of the trucks is on fire so i hopped on a car and was driving across and what should have happened is i jump on to the car the lorry explodes i then get to the next lorry and i hop on so I jumped into the car, the lorry did explode, but my car went absolutely nowhere. <laughs> and I sat there, and I tried to shoot, I tried to do anything. Absolutely, wasn't wasn't for happening. Was not for happening. And another one as well is uh, you are hijacking, or the idols steal- You walked uh, right past the thingy. Did I? Oh yeah. Uh, the idols steal uh, McDonald's kids toys, mm. uh, Happy Meal toys, and you have to chase the car, Sideswipe it but not destroy it and then steal the car back um i four times i had to do that mission because every time i got the car to stop i was unable to actually get into the vehicle yeah uh that one nearly made me quit <laughs> i'll not lie whoop there we go so yeah uh technically not not the scientist um Together we shall burn Gwen and I feel House like Phoenix the technical Phoenix. standpoint is actually probably for me the biggest hurdle about this. Take away some of the characters I don't like. Take away the empty, um, the slightly empty, maybe slightly dated uh, open world. It's the technical issues for me are killing my enjoyment of this mm. game. Uh, I have to admit that is my biggest, biggest peeve about this game. Well, Nick, do you have any other questions, or should we skip ahead to my final thoughts and opinions? No, we can, we can skip ahead. Grand. So, join us after this commercial break <laughs> for my final thoughts and opinions on Saints Row. So that was gameplay footage from Saints Row, but Nick, I feel like you have a question to ask me. Yes, if I was on the fence about Saints Row, Hans, what would you say to me? I, I hate this game so much. Fuck this game. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, that. this, uh, I feel like this is actually a lot of fun. Um, like the actual gameplay is a lot of fun. It's a throwback to Saints Row Three. Um, you know, more emphasis on kind of car combat and guns and that sort of thing rather than superpowers. Um, it does feel like Saints Row 3 just kind of high res almost, remastered. Um, I can see past the maybe slightly boring or dated open world, um, so I can. I really struggle to see past though the technical issues. Um, the, 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 the uh, um, during this, I'm sure you'll see it because <laughs> as we play it on a bit, um, none of my <laughs> takedowns were actually hitting properly, and yeah, like it, that, it's that sort of thing. Again, that's a little pet. That would be like to me a one, a bit of technical jank. It's not a, not a game breaker, but the constantly having to restart from checkpoints and missions the having to restart the game because you're still in passive mode like there was a point where i couldn't do anything i couldn't draw a gun i couldn't even bring up menus those are the things where i i find it difficult to see past and i don't think i don't think the fun gameplay is fun enough to persist through those at the minute um i think once the first patch comes out and hopefully deals with a lot of those technical issues this will be a very fun game um, but at the minute, it's very hard to see past those technical issues. Sweet. So that was Saints Row, currently available on PS4, PS5, Stadia, PC, Xbox One, and Xbox Series XS, ranging from 50 to 55 pounds, depending where you buy it. Thank you very much for joining me, Nick. See ya.